first reading is from Genesis chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 11. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, I thank you um, so much for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you speak to us. And I pray that we would hear from you, God, that we would receive from you. And I thank you that you're faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so back in the first lockdown, um, I was living in a um, community. I was living with um, a bunch of people from Bible college. There was about 15 of us, something like that. Um, and I got a bit bored, let's just say. Um, and I had decided to go on a bit of a spending spree um, and I decided that I wanted to have some fun with my friends and entertain ourselves so I decided to buy this and it is basically you can put your entire body into the balloon and jump around and have fun <laughs> that, is, that is what it is and I, I was so excited about this balloon jumping around the thing. I was so excited about it. And I thought this, we're gonna have so much fun. You know, like I went around and told all my friends and uh, some of them were excited, some of them thought I was insane, but you know, it was gonna be great fun. And so um, we, you know, this, this is gonna be really, really fun. I also bought my nieces a couple things and sent them out. It wasn't these, I bought them something else. Um, and I sent them to the, and I sent it to the States. And so I waited with great anticipation, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, I waited, and I waited, and um, after a while, most of the people I was living with ended up going back to their homes or to other places as the lockdown eased or whatever, and we can move about. And, and I was a little bit disappointed they were all leaving me if <laughs> I wanted to jump in the balloon with them. And so and I was like, okay, that's okay. I still have a few left that will, you know, play around with the balloons. And I still waited for these balloons to come. And then finally one day, the great day came. I got this package and I opened it up and it was the balloons. And I was so excited and I ran and I told my friends, I was like, the balloons are here. And I opened it up and something was a bit wrong. The balloons were slightly too small, let's say. <laughs> they were a bit too small for you would expect to be able to fit an entire human being inside the balloons. But me being the ever optimist had decided, it's okay, we'll still go for it. You know, we'll still try these out. 
there wasn't actually even instructions to these balloons, but I still looked it up online. I was like, we're going to do this. I'm going to fit my body in this balloon. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, I, I try to get my leg in. <laughs> it's going to work out extremely well. My friend tried to get his head inside of it. Don't do that. <laughs> that is not a good thing. Needless to say, it was a bit of a failure. <laughs> this is me and my friend looking very sad at our broken balloons. They were very broken. And the stuff that I sent to my nieces didn't even arrive. <laughs> they never showed up. Um, and, and oftentimes, this is what we feel like that happens with our promises and our dreams and the things that we're waiting with great anticipation with the Lord. They just sometimes, they feel like it fails. We feel like God just doesn't show up. And the thing is, that's just not true. God is a God of promise. God is a God that is faithful. He's not like those terrible balloons. He doesn't come in too small. He doesn't not just show up. He actually is a God of promise. He actually is we see in the story with Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, you know, the Lord comes to him and says to him, you are going to be a father of many generations. And he says it's going to be vast as the stars in the sky. If you've ever tried to count the stars in the sky, it's a bit impossible. I've tried it. I give up quite quickly. It doesn't, it's really hard to do because there's so many and he says, you're going to be the father of many nations. But there's a problem with Abraham and Sarah. They're past the childbearing age. They're close to 100 years old. But yet the Lord says to them, you're going to be the father of all these generations. And yet they even still have a problem further. Sarah has been barren all these years. And if you read in Genesis 18, which we won't do now because we don't have the time. But it's quite an interesting reaction that Sarah has. She laughs. She laughs when she hears the Lord say this. She laughs at him and says, yeah, right. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Yeah, right. And the Lord hears her and says, I heard you laughing, Sarah. She puts her in her place and says, it's going to happen. You will have a child. And how many times do we do that? We, we feel like the Lord may be saying something to us. We feel like with great anticipation, but we laugh and say, yeah, right, this will never happen. But the Lord says to us that he has great promise for us. Because he is the God of promises. So what, is that, what does promise actually mean to the Lord? Promises. The promise of God is the declaration or assurance which God has given in his word of bestowing blessing on his people. Such assurance resting on the perfect justice, power, benevolence, and immutable veracity of God cannot fail performance. His promise is a declaration of his word. Luke 1 3, 137 says this, for no promise from God will be impossible of fulfillment. His promises will be fulfilled. And we see that over and over and over again throughout Scripture. His promises are fulfilled, and we see it in Jesus, the Messiah. He promised the Messiah over and over again and the messiah came jesus came to save the world and jesus did but however the the jewish people who waited for centuries oftentimes they expected him to come in different ways they expected him to be to come as this great king that would come and just you know quench his enemies right away <laughs> but how did jesus come he came as a baby in a manger and that's not how a lot of the Jewish people thought he would come. And 
And a lot of people have missed Jesus because they expected him to come in a certain way. And oftentimes, maybe we have missed what God has done in our lives. We have missed it. We, have, we haven't actually seen it. And we've still contained this place of bitterness or frustration because we, we've missed what he's actually already done. Jesus is that great promise. And he's done it so powerfully. He's saved us. He's done something incredible and something amazing. He's he is that amazing promise in our lives. God is a faithful God. God is faithful, and sometimes we forget it. We can see that word faithful in Hebrew actually is the word emet, and it means truth, and it relates to stability, reliability, and trustworthiness. God is the consistent God. He's consistently truth. He's consistently reliable. He's consistently trustworthy in our life. And sometimes it's hard for us to hold on to that. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that. To remember who he is. I remember... I used to live in this place called Homestead Manor. It's this beautiful manor, and it has amazing grounds, and it's, it's where I lived near Bristol, um, Brighton, sorry, it's where I used to live near Brighton. Um, it's a youth of the mission place. And before they got it, um, they used to live in these various different places, and it just wasn't kind of conducive to what they felt like God was asking them to do. And then this manor comes up, Homestead comes up, and they felt like that's where they need to live. And so they, they spent a long time raising the funds. They worked really hard. And so they, they finally were like, okay, we, they were able to put down the money to try to purchase the land, purchase the, the manor. And um, it was sold out from underneath them and went to someone else. And they were quite frustrated. And they're like, God, where are you in this? What is going on? And so they waited a few more years. They waited a bit longer. And finally... The, the manor comes back up again um, in, in, in pricing and stuff and, and being able to be sold again. And so they, they were like, great, okay, this opportunity again. So they get the money back up again. And so they go up and they say, yes, all right, we, we want to purchase this again. And then yet again, it gets sold to someone else. And they're so deflated and they're so frustrated and they... And, but they really believe this is what God's asked for them, and so they pray and they, they walk around, and but yet they're, they're still living out and doing what God's asked them to do. But they're you know they're a bit deflated and frustrated at this point, and so they spend a few more years waiting and waiting and waiting, and then finally the property comes up for sale once more. But this time the property is cheaper, the furniture. Is thrown into the sale, and there's more land attached. And they go for it one more time, and they get it. They get the property. And oftentimes, we, we kind of give up on that first try. We, we say, okay, no, I'm done. But actually, maybe what God has for us is more. <laughs> what God has for us is a bit more. And we don't see it. We don't see what he's doing. Because we don't, we don't understand his timing. We see here in the timing of Abraham and Sarah, we see in God's timing, they were old. <laughs> they were 100 years old. But yet God has given them Isaac, and it says in Genesis, right at the appointed time. It says it was at God's appointed time. God wasn't late. It was at God's appointed time. He wasn't late. He, God wasn't trying to catch up on himself. God did it right when he meant to do it. He got all the glory. And oftentimes, I'm, you know, there, there's things in my life, I'm like, God, where are you? You're a bit late in this. Where are you? But maybe what God is doing is more. But maybe what God has for me is a bit more. 
and the way that he's done it in my life is a bit different and I, and I don't see it in that way, but what it is is something so much more powerful and so much more good. And sometimes it's just hard to see it that way. One of my favorite, um, uh, what is this called? Quotations. Quotes, there you go. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes, thank you. One of my favorite quotes is this, and I don't know what the author's name is, but it says this, if you focus on the dream, you'll become disillusioned. But if you focus on the dream maker, you'll never be disappointed. And I love this quote. Because so much we focus on the dream and we ask God, where are you? Why isn't it happening this way? We become frustrated, we become bitter, we become angry, we become disappointed and disillusioned. But if we were to focus on him, the promise, the dream maker, the one who's faithful, the one who's true, will never become disillusioned or disappointed because we recognize he'll always do it with more and better and more powerful. And I want to leave you with one last thing. In, um, in Genesis, it says that God visited Sarah and that word visited actually means to focus in on and he and that same word appears again with hannah when she was barren with um, and she has um, samuel and then again with elizabeth when she was barren and she has um, john he focuses in on and i just want and i believe that god is focusing in on if you feel barren if you feel like god where are you what's going on he focuses in on. And so as he focuses in on you, let's focus on him. Let's focus on the one who is the promise. Let's focus on the one who is the dream maker. Let's focus on the one who is faithful. Because he is good. As he focuses in on you, let's focus on him. So let's pray. God, I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you that you see us and that you know us. I thank you that we can trust in you. And so, Father, I, I pray if there's anything that we have become just a bit disappointed about, that we just haven't quite understood in our lives, and we've wondered where you've been on. Maybe we felt just a bit barren. God, I pray that you help us to give it to you. Lord, we give it to you right now. We hand it to you. And we choose to focus on you, Lord. We choose to focus on you. Because you are faithful. And you are our promise. And you are good. We're going to stand and sing, Our God is an awesome God. Let's stand.
in our awesome God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please sit for our prayers of intercession? <coughs> And we begin by praying for God's world and particularly the situation in Ukraine. And Lord, we don't find it easy to keep patiently praying and yet seeing so little by way of results. Lord, help us to be faithful in prayer. But also, Lord, we think of those for whom the enduring is so much, much more difficult. We pray for Christians, our Christian brothers and sisters living in Ukraine. We pray for their witness to those around them, Lord. Help them by their word and deeds to point other people to you, Lord. To show other people that you are God who cares, who's in that situation, who hears their prayers. And Lord, we continue to look for you, to you, the dream maker. And pray that you may work powerfully in that country. Lord, in your mercy, hear me. And we pray for our own country, we pray for members of the Conservative Party as they vote for who will be our next Prime Minister and ask that you would give them wisdom in this. Help them to think on behalf of the whole nation and help the two candidates to be wise in the promises that they make during this period of campaigning. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. And now we pray for God's church, and to begin with, let's pray for the Lambeth Conference. And Lord, we pray for the bishops of the Anglican Church as they gather together, that you would encourage them and refresh them. Lord, we're saddened by all the talk of and focus on disagreement and division. We pray, Lord, that the focus may be on you and how the church can work together to proclaim your gospel and to bring about your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church, Lord. We pray, looking forward to the visit of the YWAM team coming soon. We pray, Lord, for Erin, that you would sustain her as she uh, guides that program for their visit. We pray, Lord, that you'd encourage and equip each member that comes on the team. And we pray, Lord, that all that they, all the people that they work with will be blessed by that encounter. And we pray particularly, Lord, for the holiday club that we'll be holding here. We pray, Lord, that it may give a real boost to our work amongst children and families. And with that in mind, we continue to pray for the funding that we need for the Children and Families Worker Post. Lord, we're frustrated that some of our dreams for children and family work are, in a sense, not progressing well, that we have failed to bounce back from COVID. We pray, Lord, make us faithful. Help us to keep believing in you and in your goodness. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer for those in need. Lord, we think of those we know, people close to us who are in need. And Lord, that is so many people, so many different needs, so many different problems, some of them short term, some of them long term. And Lord, we want to lift them to you. And we particularly pray for Nancy as she copes with living without Jeff. But in a moment of quiet, let's, let's lift the people we know and their problems and bring their needs to our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer for ourselves, Lord, as we think about this week and particularly just what tomorrow brings, we think about the people we will meet tomorrow or the conversations that we'll have on the phone or the emails or text messages we will send. And we pray, Lord, that we may be alert for opportunities to serve you. That we may be sensitive to the Holy Spirit promptings. That we may believe in your promises. That you want to use even us. That you have plans for our daily lives. Lord, we want to serve you and honour you and glorify you in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we finish our prayers by joining together in the words that Jesus gave us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom name. come, your, your will be done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We stand to sing the hymn, Tell Out My Soul, the Greatness of the Lord. Thank you. 